morning, everyone. This morning, we're celebrating who we are as God's people here at Camberwell Baptist Church. And as I was thinking about this, preparing this sermon, I thought it'd be good to share with you the story of another multicultural group of people many years ago, which started a movement that actually resulted in us being here today, worshipping God. The time was Pentecost, a time when people from all the known nations at that time in history came together to celebrate. The place, Jerusalem, and the event that started everything that day was the baptism of the disciples by the Holy Spirit. You know, the impact of this baptism was seen by thousands of people and the ongoing result caused the church as we know it to be born. In the days before this, Jesus had been crucified. He'd risen and he'd appeared to his disciples and to many other people. And during that time, when he was appearing to people, he gave his disciples the command to stay in Jerusalem until they received the gift of the Holy Spirit. And so whilst they waited, doing as Jesus had asked, they gathered each day with some women and prayed. Now, when you think about it, the disciples must have been experiencing a roller coaster of emotions over that time. And then suddenly, out of nowhere it seems, a sound like a violent wind fills the house and what seems like tongues of fire separated and came to rest on each of them. Now, I'm sure that alone would have stunned most people. But that wasn't all that happened. They were also filled with the Holy Spirit and began speaking in tongues. Now, today, when people talk about speaking in tongues, they usually talk about it being a language that needs an interpreter. But this was different. It seems the disciples were speaking in known languages, languages they hadn't learnt and languages that were understood by everyone around. And the other thing is that none of this happened quietly. They must have been making an incredible noise because people came from outside all around to hear what was happening and to see what was going on. They came from everywhere, surprised and bewildered as they heard what was being said in their own language. And the surprise grew when they saw who was speaking. It was the disciples and that made them even more astounded. People knew these men were not educated men, yet they were speaking in other languages. You know, it just made no sense. The Bible records for us that 16 different languages were being spoken that day. And we don't know whether the miracle was in the speaking or the hearing, but what we do know is that it was a miracle. And we don't know how long after it all began before Peter actually stood up and began speaking to the crowd as a whole. But we do have his sermon, what he said that day, recorded in the Bible by Paul, following the passage that we read earlier. Peter started speaking by quoting from the Old Testament. He pointed out that what was happening was actually the fulfillment of prophecy. And he went on to talk about Jesus, what had happened to him, and that Jesus was the Messiah they'd all been waiting for. He explained that the people needed to repent and be baptised in Jesus' name. And you know, the result that day was that an incredible 3,000 people were added to the church. Can you imagine what it must have been like to have been there that day for that first multicultural service? Think about the amazement 
and the excitement that would have filled that place. And you have to remember that all this happened after the disciples had been through an incredibly difficult time with trial and crucifixion before this. What they had just lived through had turned their world upside down and everything was torn out of their control. We all know what that's like, don't we? To go through a difficult time, to have our world and our plans and our thoughts all thrown up in the air and to have control taken completely out of our hands. Thinking about all of this, I started to wonder if the disciples felt that those who had condemned Jesus had destroyed everything, what they were hoping would happen. Maybe their thoughts were similar to, it, to some we may have experienced recently, that others were destroying our hopes of getting out of lockdown. I wonder if what we've been experiencing this year mirrors some of the feelings that the disciples had at that time when their world, their dreams and plans were all suddenly brought to an end with the crucifixion. I can't imagine that they felt prepared for what happened that year to their world any more than we were prepared for what happened to ours at the beginning of 2020. But as we know, then and now, I believe God is still in control. This event of Pentecost happened 50 days after Passover Sunday. It was the, days that the day that the Jews celebrated the Feast of Pentecost, something they'd been doing every year for around 1,500 years. That's the reason there were so many people from all over the known world with so many different languages all in Jerusalem on that day. Pentecost for the Jews was a celebration of the first fruits of grain and oil. Grain and oil not only gave life, but they were symbols at the time of abundant life. You know, this abundant life was also the gift that the Holy Spirit gave to the, his followers, to the disciples that day. A gift that we too can experience. During this time of COVID-19, our garden has been pruned and cared for, like so many of our neighbours, far more than normal. As we've been home far more than normal and have more time to do this. For me, our garden brings a lot of peace and joy. It has a variety of different plants, large and small, robust and delicate. All of the plants in our garden were chosen by us and they're all growing in the ways that they were created to grow. And each and every plant adds the uniqueness to the beauty of our garden. I believe this is a great picture of our church. With every person, every member being who God has created them to be. Each of us chosen by God. Each of us contributing to the life here. Whether we're big or small, strong or weak, no matter what our background, each of us has a purpose and place in this community. You know, I don't think it was a accident that this outpouring of the Holy Spirit happened at a time when there were so many people from so many nations present to experience it. God's message, God's blessing, of the Holy Spirits for all nations on earth, as was said in our call to worship. At the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue 
acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord. Bruce and I have had the privilege of living and working now in four very different cultures. And one thing that God has revealed to me was that each unique culture brings a new insight into who he is. Different cultural ways, thoughts are not wrong. No matter how strange they seem to us, they're just different. Each culture has a different way of seeing and understanding God. And if we allow it, it brings a depth of faith that can't be easily found without this interaction. I know for me, for my life and faith, they've certainly become far richer for those experiences. But this doesn't just apply to different cultures or nationalities. I believe it's also important to learn to appreciate different personalities and different ways of understanding how God works. It's important for us all to be listening respectfully to one another, especially those that see things differently. The church, after all, was not a Western cultural invention. We are a people who began as a multicultural, multi-language group of people. We are called together, each with a unique purpose and gift, to work out life together as a community of God's people. We're to serve Jesus, empowered by the gift of the Holy Spirit. Who knows what will happen as this difficult time comes to an end? Who knows what blessing and growth in faith God has in store for us? Like the disciples, we are now in a time of waiting for the time when God will pour out his spirit on this world. And like them, we need to be active, praying and seeking God's guidance on what he's asking us to do as we wait. Will you pray with me? Let's pray. Father God, we thank you that you have invited us to be part of your church. We thank you for the richness of life and community here at Camberwell. We thank you for the experiences and the faith that people bring to our congregation. Lord, we pray that you will use us, your people, to reach out into our neighbourhoods, our world, our communities, to share your love with others, to bring more people into this church, community and people of faith. Lord, we love you and we thank you so much for loving each of us. Help us to be faithful as we wait on your purposes now. We pray in your name. Amen.